Oh my God, we're live, live from downtown Ventnor Heights, New Jersey, and the fine offices of whatever building you're in, in Bethesda, Maryland. Yes, yes. yes. Good evening, Pops. Um, before we get started, just a truly tragic day for obvious reasons. Um, so both my dad and I just want to start out by saying like, yeah, we remember and empathize and yeah, sympathize. Yeah. Sympath yeah, we'll never forget that. I remember being in school and getting taken out of school when we were living in Arizona. I, do you remember where you were, Dad? When when I was happened? well, I was I was at home yeah. when when uh, the first tower was hit, um, and your mother and I were watching it on TV. Then I went to work, um, but the thing that I remember more than anything where we lived in Scottsdale yeah. we weren't that far from uh, Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix and we were a mile and a half away from uh, Scottsdale Airpark and so we always had a ton of airplanes flying over our house but that night it was so eerily quiet because nothing was flying it's it's sad man like it's just so tragic and sad and honestly like i wasn't particularly emotional all day you you know i you read about it you remember it but yeah. like, honestly just bring this up right now dude it makes me really emotional it makes me really sad like i i yeah yeah it was it it, it was as if even though the nearly three thousand people that died we didn't know them um but they were ultimately part of our family so we all felt like we had a loss as well. And, and, and so, yeah, it was a really an incredibly sad, moving, tragic day and, and, and an eerily silent night. I, I'll just, I'll never forget it as long as I live. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got a, um, an hour, maybe two here, you and me, maybe we can have some fun. We can take our minds off that, have a bit of a distraction and you know what pops? Oh, I love your effing birds um, uh, mug. It's very yeah, but I but I got it turned around so you can't see the the side that that could piss people off. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do, Dad. Let's start with we've got from Automotive News yes. a roundup of the latest output cuts as chip crunch. Worse. And and oh, can I ask one other thing? Have have you been able to find? Because I haven't looked, and so shame on me. Uh, but I was just wondering if you might have checked on Automotive News if they've listed the incentives for this month yet. Yeah, we can pull up incentives. Okay, well. good. Yeah, like, or, or lack thereof. What, yeah, what? yeah, it'll be good to it'll be good to yeah. review them. So let's start with this roundup, or actually, let's start with inventory. Okay, okay. I think inventory is the the storyline um, that we're going to be following for the foreseeable future. This is last month's inventory. So this is August 1st. As of August 1st, US car and light truck. And dad, what we're going to be talking about is days supply of inventory. Yes. The number of days needed to sell all vehicles in inventory based on the previous month's daily selling rate. Yes. It's important to make sure we really understand because there's some really kind of crazy things that are going on. And actually, Dad, if it's okay with you, let's start with Toyota. Okay. So last month, Toyota was at a 17-day supply of inventory with 139,000, let's round up, 140,000 vehicles in inventory. Okay. This month, so as of September 1st, and this is national, right? Yes. National, Toyota's market day supply went up. That's great. By, by one day, but but their You're supply of cars in went down, didn't it? Yeah, it went down 5,000 vehicles. So what's the only explanation for how that could happen? Um, there's less people buying cars than before. Even though there's less inventory, it's not being scooped up quite as quickly, which indicates to me that maybe, just maybe, there's more and more consumers out there refusing to pay the additional dealer markups and these exaggerated dealer accessory and protection packages that dealers are, are forcing customers to, to uh, purchase when they get the cars. Justice has it right. Less people are buying. The sales yeah. rate is down. I mean, there's, yes. that, that is the storyline. However, much belabored no much blue blue ba, ba, um much beluga whale is that a type of yeah. whale there is a type of whale that is beluga yes yes it's usually white yep there it is okay much beluga whaled um i don't think that's a saying but ford 
last month had 156,000 vehicles in inventory and a 36 day supply. Yes. This and month, today, 210, rounded up, 211,000 vehicles in inventory and a 43 day supply. Yes. Your take on that, Dad? Um, that they finally shipped cars that had, that had been sitting in fields. Um, and, you know, they don't anticipate um, the their sales picking up to any great degree. And let's face it, their sales were off more than any other major manufacturer um, in the month of August. Their sales were down 33%. So um, I guess you can extrapolate from that that Ford isn't expecting good and positive things to happen. Absolutely. And Ryan has it right. The word I was looking for was that, but I don't even know how to pronounce it. Beleaguered. Beleaguered. Yes. Beleaguered. Yes. Yes. I yes. was close. Uh, you, you, well, yes. If a whale was close to being beleaguered, then you were close. Yes. Beleaguered. There he is. I, I, <laughs> I think that's pretty much what I said. You said it right. You said okay. it Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. So let's keep going through, Dad, because it's fascinating. So this is, again, last month. Well, you know what's more fascinating is is the fact that that as the, um, the esteemed college gra- uh, dropout <laughs> that you are... Uh, <laughs> That you do have trouble with the with the beleaguered. Certain, yes, yes. As the beleaguered college dropout that. You what does are. it even mean? Oh, in a very difficult. I was using it correctly. Yes, I just couldn't say. Yeah, you just converted it to a whale. So Ford has been very beleaguered as of late. See, that's yes. all I did. Um, so let's look at Acura, Dad. Acura's inventory last month, 14,300, a 26 day supply. Acura's yes. inventory level this month, 11,200, a 20 day supply. What stood out to you was the nine day supply of MDXs. <laughs> yes. yes. You used to, for those of you that are new to the channel, my dad managed, was the new car sales manager of an Acura dealership for what, six years, eight years, 10 years? Oh, man, you're cutting it way light. Uh, 12 years? 12 years? Well, I was, it was, uh, it was 10 and a half with the Penske organization in Scottsdale. And then um, with the, uh, with the, uh, um, the one in Maryland, Tisher, Acura in yep. Laurel, I was there for a year and a half before I couldn't take it anymore. So, I mean, if you had a nine day supply of MDXs, what the hell are you doing? You're not um, selling any cars, are you? Well, you know, the, the two best selling vehicles in Acura's lineup are the MDX and the RDX. And when both of those are in relatively short supply or extreme short supply in the case of the MDX, that's going to have a huge impact on a, on an Acura dealer. Um, so the only thing those dealers can think of doing, um, my guess is that they're charging additional dealer markup on those vehicles. And we've see, I see some questions coming through. Oh, also on Twitch, we have UglyFace21 watching us on Twitch, Dad. I don't know if you know what Twitch is, but we stream on Twitch. And we get like two viewers per stream, which is pretty cool. So thank you, Ugly. Well, so that's up from none. <laughs> and, and and exactly what is Twitch? Wasn't that a movie with the, with the Fresh yeah, Prince of Bel Air? Matthew oh. wants to know about uh, uh, negotiating and, and getting deals on, on uh, Kias. We're going to move into st- steps, tactics, techniques to get uh, the best deals in this market. We have some community stories that we'll share as well. want to continue to run through the inventory data, though, before we do. And yes, I think that movie was called Hitch, Dad, if I'm not Ah, wrong. Hitch, Twitch. What, what, what's, what's the difference? The um, yeah. Let's look at Honda. Honda what's his Kirk. name again? Will Smith. Oh, okay. The Fresh Prince. You are very beleaguered when you I... think that Twitch is hitch. Um, <laughs> I should add maybe that as one of our ad libs instead of a yeah, buddy. We could just use a beleaguered every once. We in could, a we could. Yeah. Honda dead. Honda has a twenty-one days supply of inventory last month with one hundred and five thousand units of inventory out there. This month. 96,000 units of inventory, but the same market day supply. It's the same story as Toyota, right? They're yes. Just selling less cars as inventory continues to decrease. And they just announced that they expect a 40% reduction in, pro- in production um, for this month. And Toyota just announced that they expect that to continue again into October and that there will be over 800,000 Toyota units lost production globally 
between the month of September and the month of October. Now, for the month of September, um, they were expecting to lose 80,000 units for the United States market. So yeah. my suspicion is that that between what they're expecting to lose in September and, and October, we're somewhere between 150 and 160,000 less Toyotas to be available than should have been available. Now, this is not all bad news. I actually have something that me and my dad, we've been working on, the YEA team's been working on, that's going to help you navigate this better. It's not, dad, you could see it. Wait, 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 do it again. I'm you can't see it. You can see that. But you can't <laughs> see this. <laughs> you're, you're funny, man. Um, we're going, apparently, we're going. Apparently, um hilarious we're gonna we're gonna change uh switch gears here in a little bit we'll show you kind of how we're thinking we can help even more as you're going through this process also came up with a new sound effect for tonight to uh really kind of like you know like we're ringing the alarm bell like yeah inventory like yeah it's kind of yeah. getting nuts yeah all right let's keep moving through here pops we had someone in the chat ask oh it got dark behind me we had someone in the chat ask and also if someone is sneaking up behind me Put it in the chat because, like, yeah. I got headphones. I can't hear. I don't want to see that happen, but if it does, it does. Yeah, we'll be able to tell. You, someone will tell me. Yeah. Genesis is down to a 47-day supply of inventory. Only 9,000 Genesis as of last month. This month, drum roll, please, we are down to a 40-day supply of inventory. Hyundai, let's look back at last month, Dad. Hyundai, Kia was at a 17-day supply with 93,000 units of inventory out there. Hyundai, Kia this month, 17-day supply, but look at that. Wow, down to, down to 79,000. Again, sales rates are just falling off a cliff here. Yes. Let's scroll down and look at Mazda, 13-day supply with only 15,600 Mazdas for sale in the United States. That doesn't seem like enough. Um, well, I'm sure the Mazda dealers would agree with you. <laughs> 13 still and 14,000 out in the market. Yeah. Subaru with the seven day supply, which went up. They yes. Thousand picked, up a, picked up a day. Ticked up a day. Yeah. The amount of Subaru inventory though. Look at that. Increased 4,000 units. I mean, that's, that's pretty significant. Yes. We spoke about Toyota a moment ago, but you have Lexus in here as well. So Lexus last month was at nearly 27,000 units and a 23 day supply. Lexus this month, 26,000 units, 24 days supply. So the day supply went up. Yeah. But the total amount of inventory stayed the same. Again, sales rates are dropping. And we've got Volvo with 13,000 units and a pretty sizable increase in days supply from 25 to 30 yeah. compared to last month when Volvo was at 10,700 units. So their inventory has gone up and likely their sales rate has gone down as well. As, Which, as many manufacturers have. Yes, yes. And uh, we've got questions coming in here from Dwight saying, how is Audi? We've got a question up before. Um, we, would, we would love to be able to say how is Audi, except Volkswagen Group does not report their information to Automotive News. So uh, it's, it's so well, here's virtually impossible for us to get our hands on that information. And this pops is why you and I got to talk more because it's not virtually impossible. We're working on something that's going to be coming out really, really soon. Tell vehicle me. Listings, vehicle listings from YAA. You're going to yeah. be able to search all new or used, any make, any model, any trim in one place. And when you click on one of the vehicle detail pages. So, for example, I opened up this 2021 new Cadillac Escalade. We'll yes. to show you here how many days it's been on the market. Well, this is a used one, it says. Oh, I guess it's used. Like a, a very, a very gently used one. How many miles are on it? 11,000 uh, miles. Yeah, there you go. 11,000 miles. That doesn't sound so gently used on a 2021. Can I get to the point, please, Pops? Oh, I'm, I'm selling right now. Yeah. Can we start over? Yeah. No, you'll be able to. You'll be able. <laughs> Stop laughing at me as I'm trying to sell. Oh, God. I am going to remove you from the screen if you keep laughing at me. You are making me feel very belagered. <laughs> Beleaguered, beleaguered, buddy. You are maybe, you're, maybe you're belabored too. I don't know. <laughs> beleaguered. Yeah. Okay. Well, Let me sell. Let me sell. No, we're, this is going to be free, though. This is free once we're done with it. You know, we'll we're sitting able... on the edge of our seat. Dad, waiting for I you. need to. Let me sell. Go. Let me sell. Please. 
So I understand there might be something <laughs> new coming out. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me share the screen. You're doing so. Good. Is there something new coming out, Zach? Dad, there is something new coming out, and it is the hottest thing coming out since. All right. Anyway, you'll be able to search for vehicles. So, for example, here, like I chose Cadillac, but you you know, filter and bring in Acuras if you want to look at Acuras and Cadillacs at the same time, whatever. You'll be able yeah. to use this just like any typical listing site. But what we're working on that's different is days on market. It's going to be yeah. over here. And we're also putting in here the day's supply. And this is the day's supply within a hundred mile radius of that vehicle. Also, how many are available for sale in the area and how many have sold recently. For used vehicles, we're also going to include this chart. This is still in development, so please don't give us a hard time. Like it's it's not ready yet for, for launch, but you'll be able to see where this vehicle stands, both in terms of its price and how many miles it has versus others. So this car is all the way over here. The average in the nation is here. Same thing for other used cars. Um, you know, the price history as well, how it's changed. So the reason that I share this is for brands like an Audi or brands like um, FCA products. Uh, or yes. Atlantis well, product. You know, what else was missing? GM products. Are GM, there's not a single GM product. Yeah. You'll be able to use our listings. It'll be at joinyaa.com. Give us some time, probably probably in like, I don't know, maybe six, eight weeks, hopefully sooner, but something like that. Yeah. Um, we'll be able to, you'll be able to run searches just like you would on any other website, but we're actually going to tell you what the market day supply is, what the inventory is. And also, you know what I think we're going to do as well, Dad? We're going to put the, the out-the-door price on there as well. We're going to put our estimated out-the-door price because it's important. Everyone should know what the actual out-the-door yes. price is, yeah. not, not the fake price. Yes, exactly. And and so, wow, perhaps you should talk to me more frequently. Yeah, if yeah. you had done that, maybe you would have sold it better, but that's okay. Well, you know, I, I you know, we, we haven't been together in, uh, I believe it's two weeks. It's been two weeks. It's, it's yeah. been rough. Yeah. 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 So the other thing that I wanted to share here, Pops, and then we can go to the chat. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let me share the screen. A while back, we had done a contest where you could share um, pictures of dealership lots and how empty they were. And I just wanted mm -hmm. to like reiterate, like, we're not making this up. The data is not fake. Like we have all of the different photos here. I mean, it's just nuts. Yeah, it's sad. Um, there's just no cars. There's really, really just no cars. Well, you know, apparently in some markets, there's more cars than others. Um, and But there are not nearly as many cars as there had been. And there's not nearly as many new cars as most dealers would like to have. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, Pops, let's take a look at the questions that were posted back on the community tonight, and then we'll switch gears and go to the chat. What if, I, I'm just drinking tea. Are you having tea? Yes, I am. Nice. nice. Yeah. All right. Let me share the screen and let's get rocking and rolling here. So back on the YA community, we posted tonight's stream. Yeah. Menicus says, I would like an almond cado update. Okay. No. All. You know. You know. I believe. I in my heart of hearts, I believe that if somebody could figure out how to mm -hmm. how to uh, get an, an almond and an avocado and mm -hmm. create an an almondcado tree, mm -hmm. uh, you know that we could. I mean, who wouldn't want almondcado guacamole? <sighs> Okay, Jeff Garland says, greetings again, good sirs. With the situation as is now, are dealers inclined to honor employee invoice pricing without the markup? Pops, what have you heard on the street in terms of affinity pricing or employee pricing, things like that? Is it being honored? Lots of lots of dealers are opting out of those programs. That they would they would rather than since they have such limited inventory rather than sell it at the employee pricing that the manufacturer has set up where the dealer just might get a $250 flat or a $500 delivery fee. Um, they, they would rather pass and sell it to a retail customer that's willing to pay not only MSRP, but perhaps several thousand dollars over MSRP. We have heard of some dealerships that are still out there accepting employee very few. or infinity group pricing. There are a few, but I mean, it's yeah. worth, it's, if you have that uh, in your disposal, like reach out to those, those groups. Yeah. See if you can find one that will do it, but exactly. don't be surprised um, where you might have to reach out to 10 dealers to finally find one that will. Yeah. Yeah. 
but I mean, it, it, if you have the affinity group, it's worth trying. And heck, even yeah. if you sign up for a Costco membership, like we've done videos and written articles about why the Costco auto buying program traditionally is not your best friend because dealers pay to be a part of it. But yes. heck, you can find a dealership that's not sticking you with all the other fees and accessories and add-ons and you can sign up for a Costco membership and secure that price. Do it. There's yes. no, no reason not to right now. Yeah. And then stock up on toilet paper and paper towels. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay. S Swan says, which I could be on tonight. I love this topic. One tip of advice, if I may, salespersons who have made a career out of the business or use this job as supplement to income are way more friendly than those who are hustling to get the job done. Should you want the person who is going to take their time with you, uh, teach and explain the ins and outs of the vehicle, go with someone who is seasoned. They are the ones who value relationships. Also go with a family-owned, privately-owned dealership, all of our negative experiences have been ones owned by large corporate dealerships like AutoNation, Penske, Lithia. Also, ask your local credit union bank if they have preferred a preferred car, car dealership they work with. Enjoy tonight, and please take a moment to remember 9-11. My family served. Um, this detail and memories are still raw to the day. God bless. So, Pops, what's your take on that? Because you had worked. You've worked for both. You've worked for big mega corporations and you've yes. worked for mom and pops. Do you think there's any any truth to what S. Swan's saying there that the more negative experiences happen at more kind of like the big box dealerships? Um, I, I think I think it depends on the regional vice presidents for the for the big box corporately owned stores. Mm -hmm. If you happen to report to a vice president that values um, keeping customers and will do anything in order to keep a customer, um, then no, I don't agree with, with what her experiences have been. Cause I know, um, you know, on our campus at the Penske organization in North Scottsdale, um, our vice president was if an issue ever reaches me, if a customer issue ever reaches me, I'm spending whatever money I have to out of your store's profits to handle it because the customer is going to end up being taken care of. It goes so, back to leadership, whether it – Yes, yeah. yes. So it, that's why it depends on, on the various regional area uh, vice presidents or managers. Um, and I've worked in some, in some mom-and-pop stores – where, you know, some of the moms and pops weren't the most reasonable people to, to ever be around. So that, um, you know, they, they, they didn't really care about changing the way they did business in order to honor uh, the customer in a manner in which that, that respected the customer's time. So, uh, I just want to bring up Igor's comment here. There's a lot of big automotive groups that are buying out small groups in mom and pop stores. It's insane. And I think, Dad, you and I have talked about this a lot. Yes. This is what we anticipate the future will be, um, just more and more consolidation. So to as Swan's point, I mean, she didn't have necessarily the best experience with some of the bigger, more corporate stores, but they're probably going to be more and more prevalent in the near future. Yeah. So there's, there's you know, it's it's like everything. Consolidation happens. Um, and there's like six or eight big corporate players. Yep. Um, so as long as you have that many different players, then you could have that many different approaches to how you should take care of customers. Um, so it, it, it just, it depends. It really depends on leadership. It depends on ownership. It yep. depends on, on uh, how um, the owner would like to be perceived within his community. Or her. John Boy says, why wasn't Ram on the list? So John Boy, the the big OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers, only some of them, nicely done, Dad, only some of them report the data to Automotive News, and with good reason, because they're running out of cars, so they don't yes. necessarily want to publicize that. As we were sharing just a moment ago, we're working on our vehicle listings, which will actually, back on joinya.com, will actually tell you what the day's supply of a vehicle is and how long it's been on the lot. In the meantime, if you want to get this as well, you can always go to app. YAA member, create your YAA account and run market price reports. Uh, for those, you have to enter a VIN or you can search here and then you'll be able to John Boy. So for example, if we did like 20, whoops, not a 22,000, 2020 Ram. What do you want to do? Let's do like a Ram 1500. Let's look for, I guess we'll do 2021 for new ones. Uh, what's my zip code? I don't know. I don't know. Two nine. Uh, something. That's my new one in, in DC for those. Okay, cool. 
there weren't any in the DC area, but that kind of makes sense because you'd have to go outside DC. But anyway, yeah. you can run them right back here. And then what you'll be able to see is um, the actual report that will show you, John Boy, um, the days on lot, the local average. So again, we're working on that as like part of a listing that everyone will have access to. And for right now, you can do that back in YAA, either with a VIN or you can search um, the listings report with the, uh, the, the your make model trim there. Okay, Pops. Okay. Keep improving. Um, Melissa with some tributes, which is very sweet. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is from Jeff. If supply is very constrained, why are manufacturers offering incentives? I've seen Toyota advertise their summer sales event. Acura is offering incentives on the RDX, et cetera. In my opinion, this is ca a counterintuitive strategy. What are your thoughts? What do you make of that, Dad? Well, the reason the manufacturers are offering the incentives is because they know their dealers aren't. And, and so for, for the customer to feel like they've won in some small way, I know, like, for instance, I think Acura is often offering $750 um, towards a, uh, an RDX. Well, you know, $750 on a $47,000 vehicle isn't a lot of money. Um, but having said that, it's $750 off that the, that the dealer wasn't going to give them in the first place. So at least there's something. Um, and, and, uh, I think that's the reason why, and, and I've seen like the, uh, the Hyundai, you know, sales event that's going on, Are they doesn't say anything about, it just says, you know, Hey, there's truckloads still coming in. They're not saying there's deals because there are no deals. Yeah. So, um, you know, they, they have taken what would normally be sales related advertising that normally would have had incentives attached to it to, to uh, encourage people to go buy a car sooner rather than later. And they've made it just so vanilla and so generic. They're just saying, hey, you know, there might be a truckload coming in this week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go buy a car. Some of them don't even have um, some of them don't even have like promotions in the actual like ads. Like it's, yes. it's kind of nuts. Like, yes. And, and some of the promotions are so convoluted. I don't even know if they make sense. Like, they're not even talking about, like, rebates or incentives. They're no, no. $1,000. But, like, what's the $1,000? It doesn't really say. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, the consumers are trained to look for it. And the manufacturers don't want to cut them off 100%. You know, so they're, they're trying I, to keep some incentives out there. I saw this article today, Dad, on, on the Wall Street Journal. I haven't sent it to you. Um, but it's it's everything must go. The American car dealership is for sale. A longtime fixture of American life is looking for a new model as more auto purchases move online and national chains gobble up neighborhood showrooms. And this in part starts to speak to what we were just saying with regards to like manufacturers just kind of like having to throw out incentives. Like, I don't know, the whole ecosystem is definitely evolving. It's very different than uh, than it was five years ago, last year, even 10 years ago, especially. Yes. No, It'll absolutely. be interesting to see where we land a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. Yeah, I, I you know, I don't think I don't think dealerships are are set to be cut out of the picture altogether. I, I'm I'm pretty sure that the manufacturers don't want to get into the retail side of the business. Um, that they're they're very comfortable being manufacturers and wholesaling vehicles to their dealer body, um, but they don't necessarily also want to be the ones that are the retailers. Yeah. Um, so I, I I think there'll be some changes, but I think the changes will be in how the dealerships operate and maybe how the manufacturers stipulate or mandate how their dealer body. Uh, goes about selling cars in the future. You know, I've got a question for you and for everyone on the stream tonight. There was this article in Automotive News, and I simply want to read the headline and then have a brief discussion. Okay. GM's second half production loss doubles from prior forecast. And the and the, the the subheading, the automaker is maintaining its full year financial guidance and expects a more stable chip situation in 2022. So again, GM's second half production loss doubles from prior forecast. They're maintaining their financial guidance. Here's my question for you, Dad. You just said OEMs, manufacturers, they yeah. like the business that they're in. They make money when they wholesale cars to dealerships. Yes. Riddle me this. If we're going to double the impact that we're having like to, to, to withhold our ability to produce vehicles, how the heck can they maintain their financial guidance? Like, uh, less, are people just naive? Less or incentives. 
Oh, less incentives. So they'll, so they'll probably have less incentives to both consumers and dealers, less marketing dollars spent because let's face it, they, they realize if, if they've got nothing to sell, there's no real point in spending hundreds of millions of dollars in advertising that they have nothing to sell. Um, so I think if they cut back tremendously on their on their marketing, their advertising, and their consumer and dealer incentives, that will allow them to yeah. maintain Money. the profits that they were expecting based on producing uh, much less cars. A couple comments. This is from Darren. One dealer is bragging not about not charging over MSRP, but under fees, they add a marketing condition fee of $1,500 and a delivery fee of $800. I mentioned delivery as part of freight and MSRP. Uh, they mentioned high gas lane. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, so that is a dealer that's, well, when they're bragging, they're really lying. And we've got then Jason saying, Ray, what would you realistically pay on a new vehicle today? You pick the car. And I want to kind of build off of this question. For everyone that's watching this, Deb, if you are in the market right now to buy a car, a new car, with yeah. all the knowledge that you have, both of the industry and also from everything that we do week over week with the data, what would you be looking at actually purchasing right now? And what type of deal do you think you would be able to get? Um, well, if I think if you want to get a deal, and, and in today's world, a deal very well might be at MSRP or just slightly under MSRP. Yeah. Uh, you need to be looking at something other than pickup trucks and SUVs. You need to be looking at sedans. Um, the sedans are still the least desirable vehicle out there. Um, so as long as they're not nearly as desirable, then there's probably a greater likelihood that the dealer might be willing to uh, negotiate with you. Um, so what are you getting? What are you buying for yourself? I'm so, so if, if I, I, I might look at, at something like, um, a Subaru, um, legacy, legacy, um, something along those lines, uh, you know, not necessarily a Camry because that's like the most popular of those type of cars. Um, uh, maybe a Mazda six because Mazda is doing away with the with the Mazda 6 sedan. So there could be some savings there. Um, those type of things. Maybe, 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 but this would only be maybe but this would have to be a lease. Maybe a Julia. What? An Alfa Romeo Julia is your well, suggestion. yeah, or but it would have to be a lease. And I my my bet is there there's probably some good deals to be had on those. Some Volvos for sure. Yeah, like if you're um, looking for like a Volvo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and my guess is you can probably still get some deals uh, at, at MSRP or less on uh, on some BMW sedans and Mercedes sedans. Pops, I think the, the real sleeper hit here, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, is yeah. going to be, I'm going to share the screen, we're going to pull up the inventory data, is going to be the Acura RLX. What the heck is the RLX? Well, the RLX is discontinued. There's a 275 day supply of it. Then. Yeah, but but, <laughs> but, but that, could, that could be one car. <laughs> to I, your I question, you. look, look the the Volvo S60, for example. Yes, they supply out there. Yes, but actually, let's take a quick peek at the listings. I'm kind of curious. Okay, but but the RLX is the old RL, and the RL has never sold, um, and so they finally have discontinued the the RLX altogether. No, no, I I hear you. Yeah. So uh, let's see. I'm just, this is for fun. So there's, we, we have in our listings that we're working on right now, 2048 wow. as 60s currently for sale nationwide. Wow. Um, so there you go. I mean, and this, again, when, if we were these, are, these of, are new and used or, or currently I have it for new or used. Yeah. I could get rid yeah. of used by clicking on that. Yeah. And then I could do just new. We've got 401 new. That's okay. crazy crazy there's none anyway long story short and then of course we could look at the um the the market day supply and also mm -hmm. that vehicle's been on the lot and of course back at joinya.com you could run market price reports okay so let's let's come back to the chat pops and also i pulled up the black book used vehicle report we can spend some time looking through the used vehicle data i saw some questions about vans which actually let's just jump right to it yeah what the heck is going on in the full size van market? <laughs> Last week, wholesale prices were up one and a quarter points, and you can see, I think it's right here, full size vans increased one and a quarter point compared to uh, to the prior week's increase of uh, nearly a point. The segment has now had 
31 of the last 32 weeks reporting increases for an average weekly increase of, of over half a point. Wow. So, so wait, that's point oh, wait, I can't do the math. Wait, 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 32. You do it. I'm gonna... So it's gone up. They've gone up 16%. 17.6%, Dad. Oh, okay. that's 31. Wait, wait, 31. 17.05%. Okay, so I was close at 16%. You know, I was I was yeah. rounding down and, and yeah, but whatever. That's a lot. That's incredible. Okay, so what's going on? I don't know. Maybe people were traveling again and and resorts need these full size vans to carry uh, all these people and schlep them around with their luggage and everything else. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Igor is letting us know from out in the field. Volvo is still negotiating, especially on the XC60 and XC90. And those are the more popular ones. So I met yeah. on the S60 and S90, you could get some real, like, yeah, like, I would think you could. Deals. Yeah. Anaphylaxis is shopping for a Jaguar. Yeah. If it's a Jaguar sedan, you can certainly get a, a quote unquote deal. I mean, like, there, that is out there. That's definitely out there. If you're out there for a RAV4, a uh, F150, like, those are the ones where, and here yeah, you go, yeah. Igor's saying Jaguar and Alpha Med, you should be able to get invoice. There you have it. Yep, yep. And Igor knows. He <laughs> represents some of those brands. Yep. So he knows. He knows from where he speaks. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate uh, your support. I yes, was able to get $6,000 off MSRP on a new 2021 STI this past Tuesday, thanks to what you teach. I still can't believe it myself, but thank you. Chris, that is um, first one of the night, would you say, Pops? Yes, yes. I, I, I would give him the Ray Shevska. Stamp Jessica, stamp <laughs> up. Did I mention to Whoa. you this morning? Did I mention to you this morning when I was leaving the restaurant I was having breakfast at that I got stopped by people who said, You're my podcast guy, you helped me save money when I recently bought my car? Uh, core guy and Rhonda will come back and, and acknowledge your, your uh, thoughtful donations and questions thank, in a moment. Thank you, core yes. guy. My dad called me today um, and told me, he said, I, I'm leaving, I'm leaving breakfast and I get stopped. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool, Dad. Your your um your face is uh yeah. recognizable. Yeah, I just I, I don't mind getting stopped by by like fans. I just don't want to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if fans is the right word. I think it's more community, like you know. But well, hey, um, if you if you want to, you're 70, man. If you want to call them fans, call them fans. If you want to call them friends, call them friends. You want to call them whatever. You're 70. You can do whatever you want at 70. I feel like well, that's the threshold. Well, no, I don't. I, I I think the threshold for doing whatever you want's a little a little older than that. But <laughs> but <laughs> but I'd like to believe that that uh, friends. How about friends of YAA? That it, it it's nice to get stopped by friends of YAA. If I blow up, ladies and gentlemen, it's only because I had an internal sneeze and not an external. <laughs> Core guy, thank you for the donation. Aunt wants to buy a Mazda CX-5 this October. I told her the dealership is charging a market adjustment fee, which is a markup, convinced her to wait till 2023. Yeah. Either, either that or, you know, some dealerships use the additional dealer markup or the market adjustment fee um, to as just a, a tool to have something to negotiate that you're willing to give up anyway. Yeah. Um, get you because, that's, because that's not money you should have had anyhow. Um, so, you know, perhaps, you know, you could, you, you, you could talk them into, I mean, they'll go, well, what if we were to cut that in half? Yep. Okay. Well, what if you were to take it off altogether? And, and while you were doing that, take another thousand dollars off, on, off the MSRP. There are ways to try and negotiate it. Yep. So, I, I wouldn't I, I would at least try to negotiate it to negotiate the additional dealer markup off of the agreed selling price. And and if the dealer is not willing to do that, then you keep looking till you, you perhaps find a dealer that is. And if you can't, uh, then, yes, you wait. Rhonda wants to know. Thank you, Rhonda. We appreciate this. Um, yes, I don't have a trade in. Plus, I'm paying cash. No supply near me. Is it possible to make a new car deal over the phone? I don't mind traveling to pick it up. Pops, you wrote just the other day. I'm going to share the screen and then I'll toss it in the chat. Where is it? I pulled it up. Yep. Here we go. Buying a vehicle in another state, step-by-step -step guide for 2021. Everything's here, Rhonda. Yeah. And is it possible to do it by phone? Yes. If you can, if you can be working with a dealer that is willing to 
sell a car via the phone. Which is a lot, a, a lot of the dealers are afraid to do that. They're afraid to engage with uh, customers via the phone because they're afraid if they give them the information they want, they're just going to use that to go find the car locally. But the truth of the matter is, in today's market, they're not using it because they want to go find a car somewhere else. They're trying to do it with you because yours is the only damn car out there. So I was, um, I just wanted to, um, sorry, let me toss this in the chat. I just wanted to uh, thank, in all honesty, those that have read this buying out of state article. Um, yes. I had wrote some other, some really quality comments down here at the bottom as well. So things specific for Virginia. Uh, like, anyway, there's good comments on here. There's good discussion happening. Take a peek here, Rhonda. This will be helpful, a helpful resource for you as you're going through the process. And thank you, Dad, for uh, for taking the time to to create that. It's much. Did I do that? You're a good guy, man. You're a good. Oh my god, I'm yeah. prolific. Uh, you, James, you, I was you, you, my friend, wait a second, you, my friend, might be beleaguered, but Thank I you. apparently am prolific. Uh, James <laughs> was able to get 3,000 extra miles a year for free using YA advice. I like the way that sounds. That's going to get, yeah, I out. don't know exactly what that means. No clue, but I love yeah. it. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, so let's keep looking at the, actually the Black Book Report deck because it's fascinating what's what's happening. I think, unfortunately, um, we're seeing kind of like a reversal of a slight trend that we had been seeing before, which was wholesale used car prices, everything below the red line means week over week it decreased. Wholesale used car prices decreased. Unfortunately, we're back on this upswing. We're, yes. we're here. So we're seeing wholesale used car prices increase again. And if we scroll down to retail prices, retail, 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 purple line. Yes. This is the beginning of the year. This is where we are right now. Prices have been kind of plateaued retail for used vehicles, about 25% higher than they were at the beginning of the year. Yes. And then they, and then they, they, they there was a slight downtick. Yes, for like three weeks, uh, <laughs> yeah. and and then then they went back up again. Then they went back down again, and now they started to go back up again. Um, so I don't think uh, we're seeing any sustained downward trending price wise. What dealers are asking yeah. at this point on and, used cars, yeah, yeah, and I don't think you're going to see that for a while. Um, considering the fact that manufacturers are saying, okay, truth of the matter is the chip shortage and supply chain issues are much worse than what we've been telling you. Um, and so we're letting you know now that, that our production numbers are going to be way off going into the, uh, into the fourth quarter. So let's touch on a few things here. Pop suit James actually said he signed a Genesis lease deal today on a G70 and they added extra miles for free because he negotiated. That's awesome. Love to okay. that. So we've I've seen this question pop up. Where is it? KPP. Is there a deal to be had on a new Santa Fe calligraphy? Let's use this as an example, Dad, of how the tools that we've built at YA can actually help you try and figure out, is there a deal to be had on a new Santa Fe calligraphy? Does that sound good? We can do a little case study together. Okay. It's not like I'm just going to get up and walk away if I find this boring. I mean, you, you could, but I won't be able to see that. I know I could. And, and, and the best part is it's not like you could grab my arm and stop me. Okay. So in the future, once we have our listings fully ready, you'll be able to actually just come here and do Hyundai. And then there aren't any Hyundai S60s. So let me get rid of that. Um, let me yeah, maybe you want to get rid of Volvo too. Yeah. Let me. All right. Here we'll. Anyway, in the future, you'll have our listings. It's still very much so a work in progress. Right now, though, what you could do is let's go here. So I'm on joinya.com. I'm going to log in to my account. And we were looking. Yeah, did you, did you buy, buy the annual membership or do you do yours monthly? Hyundai Santa Fe Calligraphy. So you have two options. You can, um, at least this is where we would start KPP, it would be running a market price report. I'm going to just find a VIN really quick in a certain area. So let me see. Hyundai Santa Fe Calligraphy for sale uh, near me. Okay. Okay. So this thinks I'm in New York for some reason, but that's okay. Um, let's go to Lithia Hyundai of Albany. Great. That's not Lithia. It's Leah. Uh, you know what, Dad? What? You know what, Pops? I, I don't know what, but I'm sure the that the folks that time. own Leah Hyundai their name don't, don't, name don't want the world to suddenly think that they're part of Lithia if they're not. 
True. Okay, so I um oh damn, we don't have that one in our uh, in our database. Okay, let me do um, do that. I hate when that happens. Yeah, you know, I do too. Yeah. Okay, so I I ran it for wherever the heck this area is. There are eight for sale in this zip code in this area outside of Philadelphia. 20905. Okay, average time on lots 110 days. So let's see what's going on here. There are quite a few with with high negotiability scores. So what we would suggest you do is you find one that actually yeah. is, you know, got a high negotiability score. So let me run this. 80 on the negotiability score. It's been on the dealer's lot for 106 days. This is step one. Step two would be actually reaching out. We updated. Thank you for doing this, Pops. We updated our email templates. We so did. you actually rewrote these based on what's going on in the market right now. Do you want to talk through this a little bit? And, and again, this is for KPP. So you would email Shakir. We'll, we'll tell you what the dealer's email address is if we have it. Yes. And then, Pops, what did you change about these email templates? Um, well, um I, I changed the the police don't respond with um, when can you come in? You know, uh, I'm asking questions because I need you to answer the questions. And and obviously, if you're not willing to answer the questions, then there would be no need for me to come in. Um, and, and I also um, at the bottom, you'll see where I changed it up to. I understand the current market conditions and there is limited inventory due to supply chain issues. My hope is that your dealership doesn't feel the need to add additional dealer markup and compel customers to purchase unwanted and unnecessary dealer installed accessories and packages. So with that said, can you please provide me with your best detailed out the door price breakdown, including any dealer installed accessories or markup, less any dealer discounts and customer rebates and all fees. So I, I at least tried to update the email template to to communicate to the dealer that we un, that this consumer understands some of the current market conditions and how it's impacting things. Uh, which I, I my hope is uh, that it'll play better than the other email templates that we had in the past. Now, we did get a comment from uh, a community member. Who- give, me, give me one sec, Pops. I just want to mention um, we also have an updated lease request as well. So if you're looking to lease the vehicle, yes. we did an updated lease request. And we also have an updated factory order request as yes. well. Um, and then, yes, I actually had that pulled up here. I think it's right here. Yeah, this is from Max. Yes, um, yes. Which, which and, and I agree with Max on this. Do you want to share just kind of high level what Max is saying? I'll put this in the well, chat. Well, what Max is saying is that in a lot of cases, um, it's the email, if you just send a generic email, um, it goes into their their customer management system and, it, and, it, and it'll either go to a, a business development center employee, the BDC people, or it'll just get randomly sent to a, a, a sales associate. And there's always a response that comes with that. And the response is never going to answer your questions. Um, So his suggestion is that you're better off calling a receptionist and getting somebody's actual email address. Because at most dealerships, the salespeople and sales managers have two email addresses, a store email address and the one that's associated with their for them in the CRM. Which to be, I just want to mention, what we do when we provide the dealer email address is we scrape that from their website. So we try and find an actual legitimate person, not yes. the BDC yes. email address. So it's worth mentioning that. And 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 Max's thing is that most salespeople, A, aren't going to know how to react to this type of email. It's, it's above them. Um, so that these type of emails really need to be going to sales managers or general sales managers. But salespeople... Um, they, they, they don't they don't really know how to handle it because as I said to Max, I get it. You know, the sales managers treat them like they're growing mushrooms. They just keep the salespeople in the dark. Yeah. Pops, a couple of things. We've gotten some very thoughtful um, uh, contributions here. Thank you, Danny. Well, thank Boy. you, Danny. Uh, Boy. We really appreciate that. And, and uh, there was a comment here. Love you both. Thank you for your hard work. Yeah, we really appreciate that. Yes, thank, we do. Thank you so much. And then um, from Core Brent. Core Brent, we're going to come back to this in just one second. I want to wrap up on the um, uh, on the Hyundai Santa Fe calligraphy because, Dad, 
again, email templates, you're revising them. We're trying to be active and proactive and yeah. trying to make sure that we're actually helping people with the email template. So let's go back. So we've got the email, te- whoops, we've got the email template. Yes. That's out the door price. You're going to send that. And then the next thing I would do if I was in the situation of KPP trying to buy a Hyundai Santa Fe calligraphy is I'm going to the community forum. Whoops. I got it right here. And I'm searching Hyundai, whoops, Hyundai Santa Fe calligraphy. And there are some people within the YA community that are also buying Santa Fe calligraphies right now. So let's see what other YA community members have been able to get. And so here's one from Ajinkya. Um, And you can see what invoice was, what the MSRP was, what the dealer discount was. So an OTD price here of 46,000 or 46,500, this starts to give you some perspective. Yes. When you hear back from this dealership, and of course we have the out the door price estimate here based on your zip code. So you're going to see what that out the door price estimate is. But when you get that back from the dealership, you can then cross reference that kind of pressure test it against what other people in the YA community are getting. Which which are... And, and what's going on with the folks in the YA community, that's real-time information because they're out there ago. trying to buy a car. Exactly. And yeah. then the final note that I'll mention in terms of like tools or how we can help, if, if they're trying to upsell you a service contract, the extended warranty, have your YAA quote handy, 1370 versus whatever they put in front of you. Only if you're interested in actually buying one. If you don't want to buy one, then don't now, buy one. Now, can I say something? Please. That that 1370. That means that the cost to, to YA was eight seventy. Eight seventy. We're making five hundred bucks. And if you are offended by us making five hundred bucks, we can't apologize for that. We're transparent about it. Yes. You, you, and and we vet who we work with. But anyway, that's not the point. Well, somebody <laughs> took exception to the fact that we won't. That we make five hundred bucks yeah. when we sell them. Yeah. Okay. I gotta afford shirts for my dad. Yeah. Yeah, and now, and now a growing a growing payroll too, because like we're growing the team, which yeah, is fun. yeah. Somebody's anyway, got to pay for this. Corporent, who is yeah. also helping us uh, buy you. t-shirts for my dad, which we really appreciate. Let's say we go back to normal tomorrow. Is it still a matter of chip manufacturing and car manufacturers ramping up before we see surplus in dealership lots? Lastly, what's the name of your audio podcast? God bless, Corporent. We don't have just an audio podcast yet, but stay tuned. There's one coming soon. We do have maybe 20 or what? so episodes. What? I what don't. Was that? Dad. What? Dad. Dad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we do have some old episodes. It's called Auto Insider. So you can Google search that and you'll find my dad and I there. And Pops, what do you think if, if chip manufacturing turned on a dime, kind of like you do when you're on the basketball court and we saw. I do. Would you like to demonstrate? turning on a dime right now in your room just out of curiosity no <laughs> i just wanted to ask no no i i would not because I, i'm afraid i i i'd pull a hammy or something um, all right so do you think if things just switched uh flip the switch would we see you know a surplus of vehicles on, on on dealership lots i i think if there weren't the supply chain issues um i i think we would I think normal will be about 80% of what it used to be. Okay. That's what I think. Yeah. I, I think dealers and manufacturers have learned that they don't necessarily have to have a thousand cars on a dealer's lot. But I think if they, if they had 80%, then they would have more to sell. So they could, they, they could get people into cars more quickly yep. and they could do cars car deals more frequently um and still maintain higher profit margins and and so i think if things were to ever go back to normal normal might be about 80 percent of where we had been there you go yeah Zzz, sleeping yes very thoughtful contribution we appreciate that yes thank you how'd you sleep last night dad oh like like a baby <laughs> you know, I didn't even have the air conditioning on. It, was, it went down to like 60 here. Lots of talk in the chat right now about Mazda. Uh, yeah. Uh, Justice is here on the chat tonight. Justice supports all of the YA community with our auto advocate on demand live chat. So if you yes. are part of YAA, you have access to, um, to our live chat, which Justice 
is the man behind the scenes there. Just click on live chat Monday through Friday. Start the chat. He's there to help you. And of course, post your deals back on the YA community forum as well under review my deal or ask your questions under buying. And we're there to help. But Justice and Igor are both saying they're seeing more and more Mazda deals come through. And that's where the the, the quote unquote deals are actually being able to to being had at, at this point. Yeah. It, I mean, you know, maybe Mazda wasn't wasn't on your list of cars. Um, but if your criteria includes being able to get a better deal, then you need to add Mazda to your list of cars. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Ops, Chris wants to know, what are our daily drives? You've got a... I've got a, a what is it, a 2020 Mini Clubman S, all four. And uh, you, uh, you have the Heel and Toe Express uh, or the DC Metro. Yeah, I, I don't have a car. Um, yeah. Oh, and there you go. thank you, Stiggs. Um, I sold my Volvo and never bought anything to replace yeah. it. Yeah, it's been nice. It's not a it's not a Countryman. It's a Clubman that I have. Clubman. Clubman. Yeah, I I I the the Countryman is a tad bit larger, sits up a tad bit higher, and don't tell anybody in the mini world. I've never liked the ride of the Countryman as much as I like the ride in a Clubman. And you and I have gone cross country we went from east to west and west to east and that car other than some minor issues when it comes to the uh, automatic uh, cruise control yeah. cruise control uh you know like picking something out in space and saying oh my god there's an asteroid we better slow down uh, <laughs> and you yeah, just start yeah. slowing down for no reason other than that car was great i mean yeah, even with with a, a bike on the roof yeah I mean, you know, apparently we wanted to get home faster than we wanted to get to Las Vegas. And I know when you were driving and you drove most of the way home, yeah, uh, you were somewhere between 90 and 95 miles an hour. Bike in, stayed on. Yeah. And the bike stayed on, the roof stayed on, the car stayed <laughs> on. Uh, I, I just, I couldn't be more pleased with that, that clubman. Um, Diesel wants to know. I still have the scooter, so no worries there. Ricky, Ricky, any advice on finding a deal on a Tahoe Suburban? Again, to reiterate, the steps that, that, yeah. that we can recommend right now. The best tool set you have. Uh, oh, and <clears throat> Roy, thank you for um, – Roy wants to know, so what happened in tonight's review of current rebates and incentives? I will pull that up next, Roy. Thank yes, you. please. But again, the best thing that you can do. Right now, the best tools in your tool set, affinity programs. If you have access to affinity programs, use affinity programs. Run market price reports for that particular vehicle. So again, you would search for like, you know, 2021 Tahoe for sale near me. Find a VIN, grab a VIN. I'm just going to grab a random VIN. Why are you in New York? Why, why don't you yeah, use no, like my a internet, local? My internet's going through New York or something. I don't know. Yeah, why don't you use like a, a local... Uh... Grab a VIN. Plug the VIN in. Yeah. Run the VIN. Da, 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 da. We really should. Okay, there you go. See how long it's been on the lot. Find one that has a higher negotiability score. Here's one. I mean, they're not all, none of them are high, but yeah. grab a different one or whatever. We'll just do it with this one. Use the updated email templates. Here is Michael. He is the person you want to talk to at the dealership. Copy that. Copy that. Send it off. Go back to the community forum. Tahoe, right? That's what we're looking for. I, I think that's what it was. What the hell do I know? So we've got, uh, let's see. Is anyone working on That's for a Grand Cherokee. See if anyone's done any Tahoe deals recently. I don't see anyone that, that's posted on um a particular Tahoe, so we might not have anything about Tahoes in the community. See what other people are getting. Go from there. Those are the steps that we can recommend taking right now. Now pull up incentives and rebates. Incentives and rebates. Vamp for a moment as I pull that up. Pretty pretty. Cool. Um, well, uh, when when are you when when are you when are you coming to the Jersey Shore? You have a a lovely apartment down Perfect. here. Perfect. We've got it up, so I don't have to okay, answer good. that question. Good. Yeah. Because your, your lease doesn't expire until November 15th. Um, all right. And then Ted wants to know what's the best way to sell his used car. If anyone in the chat wants to link back to some of these blog posts we've written recently, <laughs> that would be so greatly appreciated. Let me toss that in the chat really quick. Um, yeah. Because uh, hang tight, sell. Ted, look here. I'm putting this. 
All right, there we go. Uh, um, all right, and then I have incentives pulled up, so let me share my screen. But I, I want you to know I'm certain there's people on the boardwalk that are wondering where the hell is Zach? Where the where the shirtless morning runner went. Okay, yes. here are the current incentives for this week. We haven't looked at this, so let's review it together. Yeah. You tell me. You, you drive and I'll, I'll steer. Jeez. I mean, I'm still I'm, – I'm waiting to see some. <laughs> So, yeah, oh nothing on BMWs. God. Okay, so, on there's, BMWs. so there's there's no cash back on, on 2022 BMWs, and there's um, low or relatively low interest rates. And on 2021 models, um, there's not a lot being offered. And, and the Cooper Countryman um, uh, has – money if you can find one because most mini dealers don't have any inventory yeah you know they only have a couple cars in stock new ones anyway ford has 2000 on the edge transit connect and... well isn't the edge being discontinued correct okay got 250 dollars on the escape okay yeah that, Prior model that, should, year. that should be enough to get somebody to say Whew, thank god for that 250 otherwise i wouldn't have bought this thing if you're interested in seeing this, by the way, I will post this back on the YA community forum. We have a, um, uh, oh, where is it? Rebates and incentives channel. So I'm going to post this back on the rebates and incentives channel. Um, let's see. But you can yeah. see there's not a lot. No. I think Audi, is, no, there's nothing for Audi. Oh, for last year. Yeah. If you want to get yeah. an A8 or an S8, there's consumer. Yeah. Market. Well, yeah. But that, you know, if Audi, just between you and me, if Audi was smart, they would start with the nine thousand dollars, either dealer cash or customer cash, yeah. on the A8 at the beginning of the model year, just so the, <laughs> just just so the dealers have some hope of selling them. Um, continue to vamp because I'm actually posting this live um, yeah. on the uh, on the YA community forum so that no one can give me a hard time about it. So now. so tomorrow, by huh? the way, it's a good thing you're not at the shore. Tomorrow, by the way, is the uh, Ironman Triathlon. And so and bad. so so the boardwalk they're going to have two thousand participants. Um, so like the Ventnor Pier is closed, and and Atlantic Avenue is closed. To, uh, you can't ride your bike on the boardwalk tomorrow. It's it's going to be a zoo down here. But I believe, um, and especially for those those uh, YAH members that might might live in the area, I believe. October 16th, which is a Saturday, there's a, a marathon and a half marathon and uh, somebody with hair and, and a couple I'm of running times. my first I'm running my first half marathon in my life on October 16th. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Follow, follow me and my dad on uh, on Instagram and you'll I'm sure I'll, I'll probably post more like training things and whatnot if you're interested in that at all. And, and I'll be there to to uh, to certainly cheer you on, not not run beside you or run <laughs> run run anywhere. But but <laughs> but yeah, there's no better place to do it than at the Jersey Shore. Quick plug for our uh, for our Instagrams and also um, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Yes, I posted the customer incentives. So there you go. Everyone has access to the incentives. Look at so you. I helped their Instagram at Shefska. Yeah, there's going to be more more uh, marathon prep stuff going on there. My dad is at Raz's Jazz. He's almost at a thousand, which is so freaking cool. Um, yeah, I love it. Uh, and then also your uh, Advocate Alliance is uh, the YAA IG. So please consider following us there. Yeah, look, you even got your sister in the last one. Dara is in the most recent photo. There you yeah, go. Yeah, well, half of Dara's head. Half of her head. Yeah. Um, Dad, we had one final question that was here in tonight's. We post each stream back on on, on the community. We had one yeah. question here from JJ Ryan. Rain Zach, love the channel. And your videos. I'm struggling with a decision here. I'm at 74,000 miles on my 2018 BMW X2 with an expired warranty. It needs an ECU reprogram to hopefully fix a minor idle acceleration issue, new tires, brake work uh, in the next two to six months. 
I know it's not a good time for a deal, but what's the tipping point in your opinion for when you should sell, trade, and get something new or used versus keep what you have and wait? Is there a rule on when you start spending a certain amount on maintenance, it's a good idea to sell or trade? I've never kept a car this long or put this many miles on it, so it's a new world for me. I do about 15,000 miles a year. If I sold to Carvana Vroom, I would net about $3,000 for the down payment on the next vehicle. That said, most used new vehicles seem to be selling more than $3,000 than they did before the chip shortage, so it's not like I'm breaking even a whole list of potential replacements. Yeah, I'm all over the yeah. place. So what's your what's your rule of thumb, Dad? Uh, when a vehicle's out of warranty, how are you contemplating or how are you making that decision of when you say, all right, I'm cutting this loose or I'm going to continue to pay for the repairs? Um, well, let me, I can, I can tell you like the earlier minis mm -hmm. at somewhere between 70 and 80,000 miles, um, just stuff would start going. It shouldn't, but it would. Yeah. Um, and and so you you have to look and what was it? Was it IC cars that had the uh, the information as to when you can expect major repairs to be necessary for particular brands? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It could have been was, that. There's there's some research out there. Yeah, yeah. So that I would I would look at that to get some idea as into how many miles or how many years of ownership before uh, you're expected to get hit with substantial repair costs. And um, I think it was, I, I, I'm not sure if it was, I see it was, what was the other oh, one? That car, edge, car edge, car edge, car yep. edge. Um, so that they have some really good detailed information. Uh, so if you know uh, going in that, for instance, when I was at the mini store, if I was looking at trading somebody's mini that had 60 to 65,000 miles on it, even though it might have sounded good when I was driving it around to do the appraisal, I knew that when we sent it into the shop uh, to get it uh, set up for, the, for sale, that they were going to hit me with some reconditioning costs that I hadn't anticipated because this is just when they start to break. Um, so... If, if you know that, then then you'll know when it's time to cut something loose. And and this is different for different brands, right? With BMW, Absolutely. out of warranty, yeah, move on. Yeah. If it's um, if it's Toyota, Hyundai, Mazda, certain, much more. Certain expensive. vehicles are, are less expensive to maintain than other vehicles. Yep. BMWs, Minis, Mercedes-Benz, <laughs> Audis are expensive to maintain once things start breaking. Um, so you, you need to bear that in mind too. Chris, thank you again. Very yes. helpful. Um, do you all feel like dealerships really care about their Google and other online reviews? Personally, that is the first thing I look at as a buyer. So just wondering, what's your take on that, Dad? Uh, yes, dealerships do. Um, sometimes dealerships run promotions for their sales staff, encouraging their staff to encourage their customers to write good Google reviews um, so that they can get a better online reputation and they will pay the salespeople uh, for good Google reviews. So, yeah, it's important to a dealership, but the part of the problem is, is that part of the problem with social media is there's really no accountability as to what people can and will say about other individuals or, or, or business entities. Um, so that it, it's hard to know if they're legitimate or if it's just some angry person that anonymously wants to try and take someone or something down. So I'm not uh, sure I necessarily want to go too far down that path. How I'm not, I stopped right there. <laughs> Fair. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't want to open up that can of worms. Yeah. Um, uh, Oh, but but I, yes, I, it's important to dealers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Whether or not they live up to their reputation is another thing. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, all right, Pops, here's what I'm thinking. Yes. I just tossed in the uh, in the chat uh, the link back to joinya.com. So if you want to become a YA member, please consider becoming one. We're here to help as best we can. Let's call it a night for now. Okay. Um, I mean, for now. It's not like you're going to call me up a half hour from now and go, come on, let's go back on. We could, we could. And there I know go. we could, we won't. <laughs> um, here you go. And Igor is yeah. also mentioned in many dealerships currently know that customers are pissed off. So they write their own reviews and fill out the CFI <laughs> report without sending it to customers. 
and we wonder why sales, you know, car dealerships have a bad rap. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And here we go. Kenny putting the, the bow on tonight's stream. Just got back from two dealerships, Ford and Toyota. Toyota had nine new vehicles. The point of tonight's stream was to make it clear. There's not a lot of inventory out there. It doesn't seem like it's going to get better. Are there ways to find where inventory is? Yes, we're working on the listing. So you'll be able to search and see the inventory right there. You still have the market uh, market price reports available to you. And there's the community, seeing what other people are able to get and making sure that you're getting a comparable, if not better deal. These are the things that we can offer to try and help you as you're as you're getting through this process. Yes, and and hopefully you can you can find there are still some dealer principals out there who believe that you know what MSRP is fair enough. I don't need to charge somebody two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars over MSRP. So see if you can track down those dealers who don't believe in selling a vehicle for more than the manufacturer's suggested retail price. They do exist. They really, really do. And yes. let's end with a, uh, a thoughtful note from my father. I don't have any family in Central Florida. I'm not looking for any family in Central Florida. And that was in response to a but that was in response to a dealer in Central Florida that charges a nineteen hundred ninety five dollar friends and family package, whatever the hell that is. Hey, well, everyone have a great night, um, somber day. But hopefully, we've been able to distract you from from those feelings for for an hour or so. Um, and thanks for being a part of the YA community. Uh, Pops, great looking T shirt. I'm really really thank proud you, of that. thank you. Came out. Now, I'm going to wear a different T shirt tomorrow because tomorrow is. Uh, the first Sunday of the NFL season. So uh, go Cardinals. Um, hopefully we hopefully we see a little something out of that offense that we didn't see in the preseason. Uh, yeah, definitely. Cars with Chris, thank you for the thoughtful donation here. Hey, guys, new caller. Didn't have the call lines open tonight, but we yeah. appreciate that. But I just finished a deal on a 2018 F-150 and paid $8,000 below NADA retail. Thanks for the help. Congrats, Chris. Yeah, uh, good, good job. Nicely done. If you're up for it, share a success story back on the YA community. We'd love to learn even more. Sound good, Pops? I'm good. You good? Kyler Murray can ball, fingers crossed. And also Yeah, yeah. We, we, we're, we're, certainly, yeah we're certainly hoping so tomorrow. <laughs> All right, Dad. I'll see you. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll call you tomorrow when we're watching the game. I think it'd be fun. Okay. Well, I, I know I'll be watching it. I'm watching it, too. I love you, well, man. I got Sunday tickets, so I know I'm watching it. <laughs> I'll talk to you I later. love you, too. I'll talk to you later. See ya. Good night.